Okay, I'm back. So let's talk about a simple checklist to get you started. And you can see I moved from a whiteboard to a TV screen. Every single business, a ton of them has these. They're a great way to actually use. Uh, I put literally a couple bullet points up on a PowerPoint presentation. It's running through my laptop and congratulations. Look, I have a, a fancy kind of graphics behind me on this video. Um, I even threw on a different vest and ta-da, there's your fundamental you know, video production cheats and hacks. <laughs> You'd be surprised what the actual film industry does um, a lot of the time to fool our kind of mindset. But here it is. Here's the little simple checklist. And this is a checklist that, you know, when you start shooting videos on a regular basis will naturally come uh, as part of your process. It's no different when you're creating a different kind of content. And it's not that hard, but it always helps to have one of these, especially when you do a lot of pieces of content, when you're doing and multiple people are involved. And even if you're alone, uh, like I am sometimes shooting content on my own, I actually still use this uh, kind of a checklist on a regular basis. Okay. So number one, the goal of the video, and we're going to talk about, you know, in the next segment here, when we start creating the content and actually going through it, we're going to talk about quite a bit of it. But we're gonna focus on what is the goal of the video or the videos, why are you doing it? Now, if you're a, a larger organization, you have a lot of this stuff in your content plan in your natural marketing content or sales plan, right? You have pieces of content that you use either for selling or marketing that have specific goals, but you wanna know what that goal is. And a goal could be like, hey, I'm doing social content, but why? Why are you doing social content for that video? What is the goal of it? You know, is it to drive people to a webinar or download a PDF or an ebook or, you know, a, some form of a call to action? Like, what is the goal of the video? Because then you know exactly why are you doing it in the first place. A lot of companies go, let's just create a video and then they start thinking about how it's gonna be shot and how it's gonna be edited and something they saw cool and they completely, this goes, you know, somewhere to la la land and guess what? The video never gets done. It's a super, super big problem. So really here, what we wanna focus on, what is the clear goal of the video? It doesn't have to be long, just a couple bullet points so everybody is on the same track. Number two, what? who is the primary video project manager? Now, if that's one person, that's you. But a lot of the times you have multiple people inside an organization and people are like, yeah, let's work on the video, this is great, but nobody's really driving the project. Who is the owner? They don't have to have ultimate experience, but who is the owner inside that you know organization that's gonna see it from start to finish? Spokesperson on the video, who are the customers? Who are these people on video? Because you just don't wanna spring it up to them to say, hey, we're ready to shoot. They're like, who? You have to identify who that person is. Next one, whose smartphone are you gonna be using? <laughs> You'd be surprised. Number one, you have to do some prep work for the smartphone. Like it's gotta have a full battery. There has to be room on, you know, the smartphone. That's a quite of a, you know, most of us right now, I don't know about you, but I'm always kind of running out of room on my smartphone because I shoot videos and pictures and you got a ton of stuff. So there's a little bit of prep work that you have to do. And of course, who's gonna be, you know, willing to use that smartphone? It doesn't really matter which one it is, but somebody has to have it available. And a lot of business people, you know, are using your smartphones to phone calls and etc. So you'd be surprised, hey, can we, have it or can we borrow somebody, including when you're transferring the footage, there's some time to actually transfer that, right? And I, I've seen people transferring footage and they're like, I gotta be on this call, I gotta you know, stop the transfer. So it's a good idea just to identify whose phone are you gonna use. The date the video wants to be or needs to be ready. A lot of businesses go, yeah, we wanna do videos. It has no end date, which means it doesn't get done. Um, so put an end date on it. If it's an event, a sales, a marketing, something, then you can work backwards on it and you have some you know, form of accountability and you'd be surprised if you put an end date on that video to be done. A lot of the times when it starts getting to feedback or a lot of nitpicky things to review that slow the entire process down. If you have an end date, you actually stop messing around with it and you get the video done, right? And that's a key component uh, to a lot of things to be successful on the video process. Number one, a time slot to create the video content. Okay, this is actually a physical time to be able to sit down with the people that are gonna be either on the video or people that are focusing on the goal of the video and to figure out the content. What are the bullet points or what are the structured content that we're gonna go on there? So you wanna book that meeting to get it done because if you don't book that meeting, well, guess what? Again, it never happens. And the last one is time slot to scout the location and record the video, right? When are you gonna record the actual video? So those are really the time slots, figuring out the content and figuring out where you're gonna physically shoot it that do require some um, kind of, you know, a little bit more foresight in this checklist. And believe it or not, in the thousands of videos that 
my company's done. The biggest problem or the thing that actually takes the most of time is booking the people who are gonna be on the video to actually physically shoot or talk about the content. It is not the physicality of actually figuring out how to use the smartphones or do it. No, not even close. It's actually getting people's time on their calendar. So you don't even have to worry about right now what the video is gonna look like. You know, start with basically getting the people that you're gonna create that content and get them on it. So this simple checklist, I highly recommend you use it. You can of course expand this checklist. I sometimes put this into an Excel spreadsheet in there and you can start attaching if the goal of video has, you know, what kind of personas are, or if it has a CTA, a call to action, you can expand that. Or if you have content or like a marketing calendar type, video is no different from that, right? So if you have a blog, kind of a structured content, right? What's the topic? What's the title? Who's going to write it? This mirrors it, but in reality, these are the two time slots that are interesting. So here is your simple checklist. And now let's get rocking. Let's go actually start creating some of the scripting template content that I talk about.